guys, welcome to the video. So today we are talking about a favorites palette that I've put together and I will explain a little bit more about it as we go along. This was kind of an unintended um, palette that just kind of happened and I'll explain the exact, you know, the reasons why and everything. But um, so it's this pink palette here at the front. So um, and then some of these colors have also gone in this palette. This one, I'm kind of calling this a gypsy palette. Um, based on the colorings and everything and then this one here is the one we're talking about so it is my new favorites palette um, and again I'll explain the reasoning but um, you can see a little sneak peek here of some things that are going to be in an upcoming haul uh, and just some of these things and kind of the way that I am putting together this palette so I thought this video um, we were going to swatch, but uh, the video has gotten so long that I will put the swatching video up next week. And today we'll just talk about like how this palette came about and just some palette tips and kind of things that might help you when you're, you're putting together a palette. Um, and then we'll do some paintings and kind of go on a little adventure as well. So the first uh, paints here are the Stone Ground um, paints stone ground stone ground paint co and this is a Canadian company and I wanted to try so th there's two um, shops that I wanted to try this one and then the next one and these are some of the colors that I have shown and loved in the um, uh, you know over the years on the channel and some of the shops you can't get those colors anymore so um, this one here is green leaf and blueberry so this is the other shop and um, so you can see there what I've bought but um, yeah I wanted to because I have um, kind of mentioned these shops several times and I just wanted to try the paints and just check that um, they are you know that I'm kind of mentioning them and they're at really nice quality so yes absolutely they are both beautiful um, really I'm hooked on both shops they're really really lovely uh, paints and so I think uh, a couple of the stone ground paints and a couple of the green leaf and blueberry went in this palette here and then I have also and I don't know that I'll swatch this palette because some of, half of it's kind of my handmade ones um, which I will do an update at some point but um, just working that out slowly and then um, you can see here I always have to have a, a Beam Paints paint in the palette. I really love them. And you might have spied at the beginning, there is going to be a whole Beam Paints palette. Um, we'll do a whole video and swatch that out. So yeah, but I, I reconfigured this um, a little bit and yeah just they just they just have such beautiful paints that then I was like okay what do I do with these um, extras I was thinking of just keeping them till other ones that I had used run out um, but then I decided to make an entirely new palette so this is an enamel palette that I got off Etsy and you can see the first thing that I do with these kind of palettes is take the little dividers from the sides and I actually put them in the middle and it helps to keep that middle uh, slot it keeps those in place and then the the side ones kind of keep themselves in place or you can put a little bit of you know blue tack or something underneath them but um, I don't generally worry about that so then I just went through my paints and kind of was looking for um, different special paints that I really enjoy using um, that I wanted to just fill this favorites palette with so you can see that I have here a selection of Wallace and Seymour paints. I really love their uh, vintage watercolors. And then the Isero is another one I really love. We've got some Daniel Smith, some Schmincke. So I really enjoy um, mixing and matching uh, different brands and different colors. Um, and then you can see here that I am just taking these half pans and just squeezing it in. I don't really do anything special. Um, you know you can take like a, a, 
I usually I generally use like a little uh, pin like a sewing needle or a pin um, you can see here like if you if it's getting out of hand and you kind of want to just um, put that back down like you can do that or you can mix it a little bit to get it right to the edges which I generally don't do but I do mix so if if a lot of gum arabic comes out at the or like the binder comes out um, then I will mix that in so I leave that on top I don't um, fill the pan all the way up and then I will continue to mix that um, every couple of hours until the paint starts to dry and that just helps to kind of um, you know make sure that you've got enough binder through that whole half pan it's not just all sitting on top there when it dries um, so yeah so then I I actually did this gradually over probably four to six weeks so I would um, you know get it to one stage and then I would leave it for a little while th think about um, what else like I wanted to put in there um, and then I ordered a few more paints like this is um, one of the ones from Stone Ground Paint Co and this green I wanted to try this is their pistachio green and it's a little bit like the green that I make so I wanted to have this palette uh, full of things that you can get that are readily available as well and you can see how beautiful they are when they come they're like it's like a little pillow or like a, just a little artwork in and of itself it's really really beautiful um, the quality the consistency and um, I I always do generally put a little drop of water on there to help it start reconstituting before I um, wet you know use them and yeah I I couldn't wait to swatch them but we will swatch them in the next video so I will I'll try and get that up as soon as possible so you don't have to wait so hopefully that will be up like next Wednesday or Thursday something like that um, and yeah you can see the colors here swatched out I had a little go of painting with them and yeah just kind of you can see that the color palette is slightly different from my I'll, I'll, I'll put a link to my last favorites palette and um, these colors are a little bit more earthy and then we also do have some bright ones some sparkly ones um, and then these two in the, so I've just gotten a little bit sidetracked here um, with what was on my desk that day but I'm kind of I was thinking about this peach color and this kind of bright pink and so I do kind of have those in my other palette but um, I was thinking about what to put in the um, the top two spots there you can see so all of the rest of the pinks in this palette are light fast and I really wanted to have this peach pop and the begonia so I these are from little reverie studio on Etsy so I don't think that um, either of them are light fast but that doesn't necessarily bother me um, because I enjoy the colors and I and anyway I, I talk a little bit more about that in my um, Kandinsky video um, but yeah so what what I did because they didn't have the peach pop and the begonia in um, half pans at the time so I just got some I just got three of each as a dot card and then you can see that I've pulled a little bit of paint off um, the dot card I've wet the cardboard on the back and then I'm just kind of getting that off and then I can just put that little dot of paint into the half pan I'm just kind of creating my own half pan of it um, and then I was able to pick up a peach pop one so I'm thinking that I will just save those dot cards and maybe send them out um, in some giveaways that I'm thinking of doing so yeah
Okay, you can see there that I put some of the bean paints. I did a little bit of surgery on the um, bean paint paint stone and I've just basically taken out a little bit of the paper uh, so that it was thinner so that and so that it could fit in that slot and then also I trimmed off a little bit of the bottom of the paper as well so that it was um, it needed to be a little bit shorter so you know yeah but you can see I've I've turned the um, palette around so I really enjoy visually how the palette looks this way but when I paint, I just, I often, I don't know, I like to have kind of my darks up in the top, um, top left corner there and kind of move to, to the pinks at, on the right. So you can set up your palette however it feels comfortable to you to paint as well. Um, yeah, and so basically what happens is I have my studio palette, which is the one you normally see. Um, on the channel here at the top of the desk and then I just generally keep this one to the side um, because what was happening was this is where all of my kind of palettes are stored so I have this Delphonics pouch with um, the little palettes and it's nice because it's got like a bunch of pockets and so they can all go in different pockets and things but um, what I'll end up doing is pulling out, you know, one of these and then I'll need a color from another one and then um, I'll show you the other palettes in, a, you know, the larger palettes in a minute. And so I end up having a ridiculous amount of like palettes out and don't have much space. So what I thought that I would do when I, um, so you can see like here's my other one. This is actually a knitting, um, like a project pouch for socks or something and yeah I have got my like larger palettes in here but um what was I saying so yeah I would I am I, I decided to condense all of my favorite colors um from all these palettes into this one palette so that mostly I don't need to grab any of these other palettes out I already have all the colors that I readily use are now in this palette. Okay, so now for the exciting part of the video, we went on a little, um, a little trip, just a kind of day trip to Long Island. So I needed to go there for a meeting with my dad and it was just a really lovely drive there because the uh, pink blossom trees were all out and you can see New York there in the distance. So just a really lovely kind of day and I really love when you kind of go um, somewhere and you've kind of got this you have kind of enveloped in this volume of just beauty and um, all these different like structures like you've got the clouds kind of juxtaposed with the like the softness of the clouds with the the um, strength of the bridge and things like that so um, and you can see we were just driving past here and this is kind of what I decided to paint um, this was on the way home and when we had, um, we went past these kind of two like pink blossom trees. You can see here, this is not the view that I paint. This is kind of, I had, I took my phone out a bit too late to capture it, but then you've got like the um, bridge there in the corner. So I wanted to just kind of paint that. And again, like this needs more work, especially like towards the foreground it needs to be darkened and I didn't really get to finish it here and the water needs more work, but um, yeah, it's just, I'm just kind of um, sharing like this little, little snippet of the day and um, how you can kind of visual, like kind of keep a visual journal of places that you've been, um, moments that you've had and just um, things you're really enjoying at the moment. So, and you can also feel free to like 
take a screenshot or a um, just pause the video and you know paint along with any of these places I know because I know sometimes it's difficult to you know get out there and get reference material so feel free to just um, you know use those as well <laughs> So these are the kind of things I really enjoy painting in a sketchbook and it helps you start to think about composition, start to think about um, different color palettes and um, so if you saw something how you can kind of um, mold that or like you know change that to kind of fit into a, a really nice um, composition like when when we drove past this this is kind of the scene that we saw there and then the um the bridge was there in the distance and kind of a, the water kind of went around in like a little bay in some areas when we were driving along so kind of then thinking about how to um use those things and um it was like going more towards um, sundown when we were leaving and so you got that really nice pink light as well so I put I, you could see like I painted a little bit of pink in the water and it wasn't because the water was pink but really because the day was pink and so you're kind of putting some of that emotion and um, some of those like feelings back into the painting um, yeah so and then you can also see like here I'm just adding little finishing touches so I think this was this is kind of like Greenwich maybe I don't know but it's just across the bridge there and I'm just putting that in very very lightly because at the um, that's kind of what you saw on the horizon line just little tiny bits of you couldn't really make out what the buildings were so um, yeah and yeah so there you can kind of see the palette in use as well And as I was painting this, I was thinking about, so we got a David Hockney book maybe last year and it's just his sketchbooks and in the beginning there's a little bit of an introduction about him and it says something really nice about how he, um, he would go into the woods for the afternoon accompanied by his sketchbook and I think that's just a really nice sentiment to kind of be accompanied by your paints and your sketchbook and um, and have a little uh, painting session and yeah just you know that it's quite enjoyable you can see here I was thinking of putting some people in and I just watched a video by Anna Volk and I was thinking of any anyway putting some in but I I didn't do that so um, or yet I, I'll probably go back but so the next thing that I wanted to do was um, a little I kept thinking about this scene so I put this in a video a couple of videos ago maybe this little um, dove and w just walking around like the on the stone underneath these um, pine trees 
and you could see kind of the little bit of pink and the taupes and I really liked the colors so again I wanted to kind of have a go at this and um, when I first started the channel I think one of the first videos maybe I tried to paint the dove there was a dove just out the um, laundry window that day and I was kind of taking footage and I was trying to paint one I wasn't happy with the result um, and I still kind of put the video up because I think the videos are more about camaraderie like so I don't if I if I'm still not happy with my painting I'll still put them up because um, you know it's a little bit like going somewhere with someone like um, if I was you know going somewhere with my sister and um, we were painting and neither of us liked our paintings we still wouldn't say like I didn't want to go there we just would have enjoyed that being together and um, doing something nice so I will still put the painting the video up but then I'm I'm always like thinking about how I can improve that painting and um, you know kind of where I want it to get, get to so um, yeah anyway I, I really want to do the dove eventually on like some vellum and in more of like a botanical illustration style so one of the things is I know that will take me you know probably quite a few months or more so um, but within the you know time constraints of just what I am able to do um, this was just a really nice um, kind of time to paint the dove and yeah so um yeah one of the things was when it was on the stone it was almost a little bit camouflaged and so i also kind of try and capture that here uh, yeah And I really wanted to share these as well because I think that sometimes we're so hard on ourselves and we just, you know, if it doesn't kind of come out exactly how we want, we just count it as a fail, like, oh, that, that you know, that didn't work, that, that was a fail. But really it's an attempt, you know, and it's strengthening and building those artistic muscles. So, you know, like... Um, like I've used this analogy before but you know you can't just sort of go out and think that you could like produce some sort of an amazing musical concert if you've never um, put in those small hours and the work and um, one of my dad's favorite uh, quotes is um, the strongest concrete takes the longest to set well is that right the strongest concrete takes the longest time to set and so you're building these foundations and building these muscles and um, yeah it's it's so 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 don't count it as a fail you know count it as an attempt and and um, then you can just look at it and kind of think what, what you could do differently next time how you could improve um, yeah and so the next um, painting that we're doing is something that I've wanted to work on for quite a while so it's kind of a beach scene and you have New York there in the background so we pulled into this um, car park this is like on the Long Island Sound so you can see how deep uh, deep blue the water is it kind of goes straight into deep ocean where like in Australia you, you have like the soft kind of turquoise or like aqua 
um, waters of the beach but I was standing right here and then there was nobody around suddenly there uh, yeah a couple of guys and they just look really unsavory and um, I've had a few maybe four or five experiences kind of like this in the last three or four years um, all in different areas around kind of the tri-state and yeah so then I actually called my dad to get out of the car and then they just disappeared but yeah um, that's why I don't do like plein air painting really I've ha had this kind of thing like when I was with my sister so yeah it's just really not kind of the place um, so I just I'm quite happy if I can kind of just take a few minutes of video and then come back and kind of look at that and um, maybe one day you know there'll be more opportunities to do plein air but at the time at you know kind of at this point um, yeah that's how it is but it was just really nice kind of looking at the waves so um, and then you can see kind of New York there in the distance and yeah this was just a marina that or like a harbour that we went past and um, it's just really nice to kind of soak up those feelings also like when so where when I'm sort of generally with people it's not really to do art so um, you kind of just want to be you know with whoever you're with just kind of enjoying the day and I'm already doing the videoing so like I don't need to make the whole kind of thing about like stopping to need to do art but yeah um, so anyway this was this is kind of the scene that I took there and then this bridge also um, and then yeah we just kind of paint that so I use this this is probably one of the first times so we do use this in the landscape class uh, which is also coming out pretty soon and um, so I think that you guys will enjoy what I've kind of organized for that but um, yeah I'll let you know pretty soon um, and so uh, yeah we use this I really enjoy this um, masking fluid it doesn't it's it has a slight smell to it um, but I, it works really really well like it, I don't I've never had a problem with it like peeling the paper um, I did try a couple of others and they they did like immediately like they lifted the paper so um, this hasn't had that problem I think the only thing with this one is that it is white so you kind of have to um, use it where you can kind of see the reflection of where it is um, if that makes sense so yeah again um, so this is like the third uh, painting here where you can see like I'm, I'm mainly using this favorites palette there's a few things from the studio palette that I use um, but yeah I, I'm, I've just really enjoyed having this palette handy so it's like everything that I you know had been pulling all these different other palettes out I really just have it all in this one palette now and um, also some colors we'll talk a little bit more about it when I swatch the watch swatch the palette um, but some of the colors that I have been reluctant to use because I know that I will um, use them up and go through them and I haven't been able to you know resupply them some of those I've been able to you know get from these two shops the green leaf and blueberry and stone ground paint so I have I'm kind of you know more happy to use them now and yeah so all in all quite enjoyable um, I hope you guys found this uh, video useful I I really didn't want to put it up without the swatches but um, yeah I just haven't been able to get it all this yeah get it all done so hopefully um, in a couple of days the other the other part will be up
Okay, guys, so that is it for now. Have a really enjoyable week. I also really love how when you take the masking fluid off, it kind of looks like... I've been really enjoying etching and lithography and stuff like that. And it kind of looks like that as well. I have more of that as well on my um, favorite painting videos playlist. So you can check that out as well. Okay, bye.